So making 5.0 in your first year in school, it's super easy if you know what to do. Particularly, I found this truthful in my second semester of first year where I had a 5.0 GPA after I had understood myself. So I'm going to be sharing with you the secrets in this video. Stick to the end if you want to find out everything that you need to do to make a 5.0 GPA in school. First, you have to understand yourself. Now, understanding yourself talks about your reading pattern and some other things like your reading location. This was key for me to discover what would work for me in a different environment. I found out that I was the type that was more of a nocturnal reader, meaning I read a lot at night, so I had to go for night classes a lot. And also understanding that my room wasn't the primary place for me to read. Now, this will work differently for you, but you need to find out what works for you. Are you more active and more alert during the day or you work better at night? Are you comfortable reading in your room? Do you, would you rather go outside to study in your first year of medical school? It can be different for you. You don't have to adopt the strategy that I adopted because we are different. What worked for me may not necessarily work for you. So you have to find out what will work for you. You have to establish a reading routine. Now, all through my schooling from first year to final year, it was my sense of duty to start reading as early as 4 p.m. every day. Now, obviously, this was not possible on some days, either when I had meetings or when lectures spilled over beyond the usual time. But the idea was I was going to dedicate six to eight hours of active studying every day. And in most instances, this meant that I had to be seated in night classes as early as 6 p.m. most times, 80% of the time. So I had a reading routine that was fixed and non-negotiable. Everyone knew, most persons knew, you would find me in somewhere we called college hall, especially in my first two, three years of medical school. So you must have a reading routine that is established and that is fixed and that is non-negotiable. You have to make the right choices of textbook. Now I say this because some things that will characterize the textbook choice you will choose will include first, the one the lecturer uses and the one the lecturer recommends. Number two is the one you read and understand comprehensively. And then also, it's good that you combine at least two textbooks together to help you have a balanced perspective of how that particular course works and to expose you to a variety of questions that can come up in the exams. Past questions. The importance of past questions cannot be overemphasized. Having read to understand everything in the textbook and to cover the entire scheme of work, I strongly recommend going through past questions for the last five years at minimum. If you have the time and you can afford going beyond that, that's fine. But a minimum of five years would help you significantly. There is really nothing new that they would want to set. Some of these persons have been setting exams since 1975, 1980. So there is nothing new under the sun. Some things may be tweaked, but largely these questions remain the same. They just come in modified format. So it's important that you go through past questions as much as you can and as often as you can. Put in the hours. There is no substitute for hard work whatsoever. A lot of people can talk, but a few persons actually put in the work. So get to work, work hard, work smart you will see the result. Imagine reading six to eight hours every day for at least 90 days, not to talk of those who start before the semester actually began. And it's not, I would rather even take consistency over short bursts of long duration of hours. So some people just read once or twice a week, eight hours, and on those nights, they feel supercharged like they've done a lot. I mean, that's crazy if you check it out. So it's important that you stay consistent in putting in the required number of hours to achieve the goals you set out for that particular semester in your first year of school. Attend classes. Now, it's important you attend at least 75% of the classes. I know sometimes it feels boring. Sometimes you have workload to finish that it feels like the classes are just either a waste of your time or it may not benefit you so much at that point in time, especially if you know what will be taught already. I share in your school of thoughts. I wasn't, I attended classes in school, in first year of you know, school, but I knew that some classes I would want to meet so that I can catch up on other areas. But largely speaking, attend classes. At least 5% to 80% of the classes, the lecturers will give their hints. Some of them will give special materials. Some will give area of concentrations. And these are things that you should not miss out of. Worst case scenario is impromptu test. And once these tests are given, you've missed out a huge part of the CA, the continuing assessment that will be formed for that course. So please attend classes. They are non-negotiable. Take continuous assessment seriously. There's this laxity that comes at the beginning of the session or a semester, and some people feel like I'll get serious at the end. No, that's not the way of a five-pointer. From the beginning of the session, every CA test that you are having, your goal should be to get 100% max. These will all accumulate into you getting 
an A grade at the end of the day. So take your continuous assessment seriously. Now you have to follow the right approach for different courses. For instance, some courses will require you to calculate. In those cases, you have to practice a lot, not just read them. You have to practice a lot. For some courses that are largely literature based, you might have to do a lot of memorization using flashcards, active recall, and all that to make sure that you have information readily available at your fingertips. Some courses are relatively simple in quotes. Some are more complex. Now, the simple courses will require that you put less time into studying them, or the complex courses will require that you dedicate much time into studying them. So you have to identify all of these factors and decide how you want to draw up your reading schedule. Start early, finish last. This was a principle that I operated with. Not competing with anybody, but the goal was to start way before the session began, depending on how much time you have available to yourself. I wasn't as engaged as I was towards the later part of my university training as I was at the beginning. So I had a lot of time on my hand. In some cases, I would even finish an entire course before the session or before the semester actually begins. So start early and finish late. You do not stop when you are tired, you do not stop midway, you stop when you're done, and you stop when you've achieved those goals that you set out to achieve. Limit mistakes in exams. Now, this is so critical. There are two kinds of errors that you would make in exam, either errors of omission or errors of commission. You're not seeing some questions and you end up not answering them, or you mistakenly commit an error. Now, you have to avoid these two. And the key to it is to practice and review your work before you submit. Don't be the kind of student that you go into an exam or you go into a test hall and you just write. And because you feel you're done, you stand up, you go and submit. No, review your work over and over again to make sure that you're taking care of errors of commission or errors of commission. Identify the problematic courses. I'll give you an example. In my first year in university, there was a course called Chemistry 130. It was known that people would typically fail those course. And in the whole university, only one person may get an A in some instances. Now, I took that course as a challenge and I took it personally to make sure that I'm not a victim of either the marking system or whatever the case is that was the issue. So you have to identify such courses that may put a or prove to be a stumbling block in your desire to achieve a 5.0 GPA in your first year. Identify them and go hard for them, go hard at them, smash the grades. Keep an eye on GS courses. Now, this is one loophole that students sometimes fall for. When we focus on our core courses, we kind of forget that the GS courses are also very important. For instance, English in my first year was a four unit course. And once you have a B or a C in that course, it will significantly bring your GPA down. So keep an eye on them. They may not be the central part of your focus, but definitely keep a close eye on them to make sure that at least you have some substantial knowledge to give you an A and practice a lot of past questions as well. Now, trust in God. I cannot overestimate the importance of this. God was my anchor in school. I do not say this to sound, you know, as a cliche. If you know my story from year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, year six, and all that, all through medical school, there was no class that I didn't get you know, to be the best in a course or all the courses in that level and also just cutting away a lot of distinctions from my first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year. God has his hands all over my story. So I encourage you, commit your works into God's hand and he will establish your thoughts. So it says in the book of Proverbs chapter 16, verse 4, there's a story of Daniel in the Bible that, depict, that can depict what exactly happens in an academic environment and there is that grace for favor that makes you stand out amongst your colleagues and also the spirit of excellence. And definitely, I know that that's something that is in operation in my life. So I encourage you, trust in God, pray to God for favor, pray to God for the grace to study, all the pieces of information you will need, the right mentors, the right materials, let them locate you before the exams. I wish you the best. My name remains Dr. Gospel, and yes, I'm a student coach. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Till we meet again, bye, catch ya.